Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to uh, be speaking to you today. I've been asked to set the stage for this session by providing a bit of background information. So let's start with the global situation concerning people who inject drugs. It is estimated there's between 11 to 21 million people who inject who are living in approximately 151 countries. Among these individuals, between one to six and a half million are believed to be living with HIV AIDS. And in settings where HIV epidemics are currently growing, such as in Eastern Europe and Southeast Asia, HIV infection continues to be driven primarily by injection drug use and the transmission of HIV uh, from injectors to their partners. This map, among other things, uh, shows you the HIV prevalence among people uh, who inject by country. Some things to pay attention to are the countries in light purple, where the prevalence of HIV among injectors is believed to be over 40%. Uh, countries in light blue, where the prevalence is believed to be between 20 and 40%. And in countries in light green, uh, such as mine, Canada, where the prevalence of HIV is believed to be uh, between 10 and 20% among people who inject drugs. Of note, UNAIDS has recently estimated that there are at least 49 countries where the HIV prevalence among injectors is between 22 and 50% greater than in the general population. The world's leading health authorities have a widespread agreement on what constitutes evidence-based HIV interventions for people who inject. For example, the WHO and UNAIDS have come up with a comprehensive set of evidence-based interventions for people who inject drugs, and these include harm reduction programs such as needle and syringe programs and opiate substitution therapies. However, successive reviews have revealed that access to evidence-based preve HIV prevention and treatment programs among injectors remain uh, alarmingly low. For example, among 57 countries reporting, 30, only 37% of people who inject reported receiving a test in the previous 12 months, and this is actually restricted to those individuals in capital cities. It's believed that needle exchange programs are operational in at least 82 countries, but sadly, only 5% of global injections are believed to be covered by sterile syringes. Opiate substitution programs operate in approximately 71 countries, but coverage remains low with only eight per 100 injectors being covered with opiate substitution therapies. And sadly, in countries such as uh, meth, uh, uh, Russia, Opiate substitution therapies such as methadone re remain completely unavailable or are actually illegal. The situation concerning antiretroviral therapy is also bleak. Uh, among 47 countries reporting the provision of antiretroviral therapy for injectors, only four per 100 HIV positive uh, injectors are receiving ART. So how did we get to this situation? Well, uh, as Chris said, there's this problem of uh, policy displacement where the dominant response to drug use internationally continues to be the uh, use of enforcement and incarceration in an effort to make the world drug free. This has led to the widespread use of street-based and aggressive uh, policing as well as the widespread use of mass incarceration of suspected drug users. There is now a rapidly growing body of evidence that documents the downstream adverse sequelae of such efforts. For example, this study uh, that involved people who inject drugs in Bangkok, which is in press right now, uh, which shows a very strong and significant uh, effect of uh, police interventions on syringe sharing, as shown here. Uh, people who reported ever being beaten by police or subjected to random urine testing were much more likely to report syringe sharing. And in a recent modeling exercise published in The Lancet by Stephanie Strathy and colleagues, uh, they showed that a significant number of new infections could be averted in the Ukraine among people inject by simply eliminating police violence. There's also a large body of literature documenting outbreaks of HIV infection among drug users uh, within prison settings, but there is also a growing body of evidence documenting the adverse impacts of incarceration on HIV treatment outcomes. For example, this study shows a strong dose-dependent relationship between the number of incarceration uh, episodes and individual experiences and the likelihood of non-adherence to antiretroviral therapy. Sadly, successive reviews have also documented the uh, profound failure of the war on drugs. 
A recent report from the Global Tr Commission on Drug Policy reported that global heroin supply between 1980 and 2010 has increased by a staggering 380 percent, during which time the price of heroin in Europe decreased by 79 percent. So in conclusion, it's very clear that people who inject drugs continue to suffer from alarmingly high rates of preventable HIV infection. At the same time, it is clear that evidence-based HIV prevention and treatment interventions for drug users exist, but access remains unacceptably low. Enforcement and incarceration have not only failed to reduce the use and supply of drugs, but have actually continued uh, to contribute to the spread of HIV infection and HIV treatment failure in this population. So at this time, it really seems that the barriers to the successful scale up of prevention, HIV prevention and treatment programs for people who inject are primarily social and structural in nature, in particular, the criminalization of drug use and the profound stigma and discrimination that such approaches perpetuate. Thank you.